love them. Oh, they're adorable. They really are adorable. Hate them. I will electrify. I'll put 20,000 volts there if needs be. I'll fry it. Cuddle them. Oh, a little friend, eh? They like company. They know we're helping them. Kill them. 33,000 urban foxes in Britain. They're hungry. They do love a chicken dinner. They look at the poor devil. Just for a fox to have a bit of fun. Fox haters, huggers and hunters. A nation divided. Every night, as the evening draws down, a little dance begins in suburban Britain. Our towns are providing rich pickings for an ever bolder fox population. I'll throw it round the lawn a bit because then you'll, they'll stay longer as they have to collect it. Looks like a fox yeah? feast. It's a foxy feast. It's quite a lot of food going out there, Louise. Not really, not for four or five foxes. Foxes started colonising the newly built suburbs around our cities in the 1930s. You can see why. Others have a very different sort of evening planned. Tim's been a pest controller for the last 14 years. That's supposed to be like a rabbit squealing or an animal in distress, which makes the fox then come in a bit closer. Um, this one's a bullet that's been adapted to uh, make a fox call. An hour later, Louise's house. They're on the path too. 10 o'clock with Tim. Big gun, Tim. Yeah, it's nice and light. It's a 0.223 calibre. The urban fox ranges far and wide. He does love to leave his mark. It's the smell. It's bad. Oh, God. I could ask you to put your nose into my bin there, but I think it might result in your, your dinner coming back up. Oh, it's appalling. Oh, I've appalling. never smelt anything like it. I'm trying to get into your cat flap. Oh, my cat flap, yeah, the broke. It's broken the cat flap. Janet's neighbour, Crystal. I tried to get through the cat flap. Yeah. And the next door neighbour as well. I love my garden because it's my stress outlet. You know, it's sheer enjoyment to see what I've done over the years. Opening the front door in the morning and smelling it and then having to kind of come down, you know, with a shovel, wrapping it up in paper. How do you think I feel about it? So whereabouts does it go? Please? Well, I can tell you where it fits every day. As you can see, by the state of the grass. And it's just gone on like this since last August. I went online and Googled answers, and I got some wonderful answers from America. Get yourself a double-barreled shotgun, honey, and blow it to smithereens. I mean, I will, I will electrify. I'll put 20,000 volts there, if needs be. I'll fry it. It's war. Yeah, no, it's war. It's a war between the fox and me. War needs weapons, and war needs waiting. So... So you're going to sit here tonight... Yes. ..with your pole? With my pole, and if I can hit it unconscious, I will then put it in a dustbin, I think, and drive it down to the nearest tip. This is what it's driven you to, then, eh? Oh, I'm, um, yes. At the end of my tether, and never cross a Welsh woman when she's at the end of her tether.
Prince is definitely Dad's army. No guns, a curtain pole. This is Brookside, suburban North London, a street in a ferment about foxes. We can't put poison down, can we? Because we can't afford to kill cats. It came in just from next door because we saw them in the winter. Now the kids won't go in the garden on their own. Yeah, other people up and down the road say they see them as well. Well, we used to have our rabbit down on the decking and then the foxes came. We were a little bit um, worried, thinking that the the rabbit might have a heart attack or something like that. Hundreds of foxes have invaded this street over the past few years. She's standing shouting, fox, fox, <laughs> in Polish language, lease, lease. This is the rabbit's grave where Tommy and JJ's buried. They managed to get out and the fox got them. I hate them. An ever bolder fox population has sparked newspaper headlines about foxes even coming into people's houses. Hello, Foxy. I first saw him behind that white bench there. Not everyone in Brookside is a fox hater. Three doors away, um, a, man used to, a man was feeding them. I think there's a chap down the road that I think puts out food for them, puts out cat food and bits and pieces. In the middle of Brookside lives Nobby. He favours a more laissez-faire approach to gardening and to the animals in his garden. If you don't like, like living near a nature reserve, go and live in a flat. How long have you lived here for? In, in New Barney? Since 1945. Do you want to show me where the fox comes from? I don't know where our den is, but I'll show you where she comes through. So you've got to do a bit of climbing. Afraid. Over there, under that blue thing. How long has she been coming for? Five years now. I just like animals. You name it, I've had it, you know. I used to collect butterflies and stuff like that, and birds' eggs, and all my life is all I've done. And work. I, I mean, I do the lottery occasionally, and then if I ever won millions, I'd just, just buy as much land as I could and put a big fence around it and turn it into a nature reserve and keep everybody out. 20 houses downwind of Nobby lives Sophia. Due to the recent increase in fox numbers, she's had to take extreme measures in order to protect her bantam hens. If a fox killed my chickens, I'd be absolutely devastated. I would, I don't know why, I'd say I'd probably start shooting them myself. What kind of things have you tried then in order so, to deter the fox? I've tried human hair, obviously the barbed wire, something jumping on top. I've got this um, pack called Fox Solutions and the alarm. A bit of a random request. My mum went to the hairdresser and was like, can I have a bag of hair? <laughs> that is the hair. <laughs> um, I've wedged it like in certain places and the foxes have pulled it out. I think there is something about the smell that, I don't know whether it angers them, they like it or not. Something about the territory. Um, on the forum, I've heard that a male urinating around the garden it's another really good deterrent, again, because of the territory thing. But Have you tried that? No, my brother wasn't up for it, and my dad was like, don't be silly. <laughs> Evening brings out Brookside's other population. This is Fox 118, now. Come on in, girl. Come on in. Come on in, your ding-ding. Come on in. Nice dinner. Come on. Come quick. You must talk to animals, otherwise they don't, they don't respond to you. She's about five years now, that one. She'll go off and she'll bury it. There's a lot of people around here are saying, ah, you and your foxes are making a noise and they're digging holes in my garden and they're doing this, and I just tell them to go boil their head. Takes two to tango. If she wants to, cut, if she wants to be friendly, I'll be friendly. But if she wants to be skittish, like the one in the front. Who are we talking about? The foxes or foxes. the neighbours? Foxes. Oh, the neighbours don't give a shit about them. Foxes can live for up to 14 years, but most urban foxes live only two years due to traffic accidents. <laughs> 
give that a bang and that's what then it makes him come. Your attitude to foxes tends to be different when you find your happiness in rearing livestock. How long have you been here for? 14 years now. It's a little bit of heaven. It's the best bit of heaven. It's small, it's handy, it's close, and nobody knows it's here. That's what a fox leaves when he comes visiting. And he didn't take any. He killed 36. If he was hungry and he killed one, I'd say good luck to you. But he killed 36 and never took one. So that is just a pure killer. A flock like this costs around 300 pounds. It's money which Tony can ill afford. That's what you see when you come in first thing in the morning. That's a lovely, healthy hen. She's fat. She was laying every day. No, look at the poor devil. Just for a fox to have a bit of fun. And what do I do with these? Tell one of these people what love foxes to come and put these in a sack now, and what do I do with them? The fox doesn't really just kill for the sake of it. He'll be back for the chicken carcasses and Tony will be waiting. He'll pay. It may take time, but he will pay. There are seven times as many foxes in the countryside as in urban areas. Controlling their numbers provides a steady living for pest controllers like Lee. Okay, I'm coming up. The world looks a bit different up here, doesn't it? I'm in my 17th year now in, in pest control. So, um, but I've always been into countryside ever since I've left school at 16. You don't need a license to kill a fox, but you will need someone with a gun license to kill it humanely. With fox control, you're literally, you're just controlling foxes. You're not out to, to you know, make them extinct. That is not the point of it, it's just about keeping a balance. I mean, the problem being now, when you're getting into the cities and that, you're getting people that are in the cities trying to do country things, like bringing chickens into their garden, and, and that's the problem now. And then you get people that feed, feed uh, foxes, which obviously breed, uh, bring them closer and obviously they get tame. And then you're getting this problem now where, you know, they're coming into people's houses. You know, that's not a natural thing. You'd never, ever get that happen in the countryside. Not all pest controllers think you can only control foxes by shooting them. Meet Foxagon, who expound their own theory of humane pest control. What these nasty people seem to forget is all this that we see around us at the moment. This beautiful landscape with its vast variety of flora and fauna all runs in balance and harmony. And if you start taking out what you don't like, the squirrels, the foxes, the badgers, then you end up with nothing. The team are one of the few humane pest controllers in the UK. Terry and Graham specialise in evicting and moving on foxes, rather than destroying them. People do have a perverse um, like of killing animals, for whatever reason. And conventional pest controllers, yeah, shoot them on a regular basis. Shoot, you know, five and six a day. We worked out that, not last year, but the year before, we probably saved um, indirectly the lives of 500 foxes. A call comes in from West London. Foxes have built a den under a garden shed and are kicking up a racket at night. Oh, 
big garden shed full of belongings. They're going in down the front edge, coming out at the back edge. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, in London, you sort of see foxes around all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not, it hasn't been a great shock to see them in the garden. But um, I suppose the first thing we noticed really was just that um, there was quite a lot of ground moving from underneath the shed. It's come underneath the slabs, scraped all the earth out. Yep. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got blinking eyes in here. Guys, he's just here. That may have been one trying to come back in and gone out again. What, just now? Yeah. One went that way. Look, he's just there, look. <sighs> a fox tends to have about five cubs a season. Terry and Graham's approach is to encourage them to move somewhere where they're not being a nuisance. give them um, flea treatment but I haven't I haven't seen a fox cub with this many fleas ever but he's absolutely see them on up on my skin absolutely riddled with them literally when they get picked up like that they normally wet themselves I don't know if that one did um, and they're scared they're very scared but the idea is we get them under cover as quickly as we can when they get into darkness they become a lot more relaxed they'll calm down and they'll just go and lie in a corner all a pest controller will do is trap and shoot um, and won't even fox proof the shed again which means five to seven days in the London area normally you're looking at the other fox starting to encroach in so it's not resolving people's problems and although it hurts me to evict foxes it is the lesser of like the evils as it were each victim when she gets pregnant will have four or five places like this to go to and she will quite simply move her cubs on. So I've just given it a small dose of that. Terry and Graham have blocked off the shed. Their hope is the mother will collect the cub and take it to a more remote den. As soon as we're finished, we're going to release it back in the garden. It will probably run back up the back of the shed for now um, and then start calling again tonight. You think it's been abandoned then? We're not sure. No way of knowing at this stage. Hopefully not. Um, but as with all the things we do, um, as we go, we'll find out what's happening. We've got a crack on. If this cub's mother doesn't come back for it over the next couple of nights, the team will arrange for the abandoned cub to be rescued. Being in that carrier for a few hours, he's now got somewhere where he's going to feel a little bit secure. It's going to go quiet. He's going to calm down and hopefully that's the end of the job. Janet's nighttime vigils have proved unsuccessful. Coming back from holiday, her nostrils are twitching. I suppose I'd better go and check and see what the little darlings have left for me. What are you expecting, Janet? Oh, a lot. They, you know, just because I've been on holiday, they won't have been. Oh. Don't, don't step in it. Three, four. I've tried to block every, you know, access point. Oh. If the wind's in the right direction, I think I said to you once before, you can open the front door, and if the wind is blowing, yeah, in this direction, it just makes your eyes water. We decided to help Janet out to identify the offender by setting up motion cameras. I'm just hoping that when you put the motion cameras up, maybe we can find out it's getting in.
Tony's also been unsuccessful with his nights with the gun. We waited seven days, and on the eighth, eighth day we had a night off, and on the eighth night he came back and took eight chickens. This isn't killing, this is murder. He's decided to burn his oppressor's food. What a waste, isn't it? Just through that loving little fox wanted something to kill. He wanted some sport one night. A chicken roast, but not in a good way. Fox hunters like Tim increasingly have to follow foxes into urban gardens. So what gun is this? Uh, it's a .22 rimfire. Um, we use this in urban situations simply because it's dead silent. We should see some foxes tonight. This guy's had a serious problem. They killed his chickens, they killed his rabbits, they've killed all of his animals, they've ripped the cages to bits. You have to kill a wild animal like a fox humanely. That means either trapping and putting it to sleep or calling in someone with a gun license like Tim. I am an animal lover. I don't necessarily like shooting foxes. I think a fox is a nice animal, but in an urban situation, it's generally got worms, it carries um, all kinds of disease. Yeah, it's only to... Um, slow the foxes down in case they come out and they run across from one side to the other just so we get them so their heads down so we get a correct shot on them we actually shot six here one evening and four the next ten foxes in two days we've shot threes and fours and fives since then but um, it's one of those places they just keep coming job done. Yeah, we've done the job. Very good night. Urban foxes often live off a diet of food scavenged from dustbins and discarded takeaways none of which are in Sophia's garden. Well, I didn't know whether it was a happy cluck or a scared cluck. Usually they cluck a lot when they lay an egg. They were scared, so I ran to the window and the fox was just like sitting there looking at them. Although there are already an abundance of foxes, I think by feeding them makes them less scared of humans. How do you think you would feel if you lived next door to Nobby? Um, I think I'd call the council. Um, I, yeah, I definitely do that. Yeah, I'd be upset, I think. If you're going to have silly enough to have chickens and you're not going to keep them well locked in or what have you, do you, do you deserve something to take them? <laughs> Mrs Fox, do you want your dinner? The sights and sounds of suburban Barnet. Urban Fox provides hours of harmless entertainment for thousands of suburbanites. Oh, they're adorable. They really are adorable. And now anybody can hurt them. I'll never know.
This is uh, where Chris and Dee live and they feed the foxes from the top of their steps. Uh, normally they, the foxes come out about nine-ish in the evening and then just run all over the place. All normally get round the bowl together if they can. Um, they go across to Bob and Joyce's over the road. Okay. And again, they go there about between nine and half nine-ish in the evening and get their supper from there. Every night, fox frolics. Entranced householders. They each have their own little personalities. You know, there's, there's the, the one who he sits at the back and waits till the other ones are finished because he's a bit scared of cat, isn't he, really? Mm, scared um, of fox. And the, you can tell the other one is a bit more a male alpha and he's sort of like, I'm, I'm having that, get out of the way. Uh, I just think, I just think uh, just animals are just, just fascinating. Animals just need thinking like anyone. Yeah, you can't ask them any questions. You can only learn from watching what they're doing. At number two, Fox TV. So you sit here most nights just watching the camera? He does. I watch the television. He watches them. He watches that more than he watches that. Well, half that stuff on telly is not worth watching anyway. I came home the other night and he said, I said, what's the matter with the television? He said, nothing on it. It's been more interesting watching boxes. Come on, babies, let's have you. Right, I'm just going to get it organised. Terry doesn't just run Foxagon. He also volunteers at the Fox Project, a charity dedicated to rescuing foxes. The fox cub from under the West London shed was never collected by its mother, so was brought here. We see uh, a high percentage of sickly cubs because they're the ones that um, mum leaves behind and people find. So he was rescued by one of our volunteers and brought in. It's eating, which is a good sign. And um, I expect it to fully recover. What's this? What, a little friend, eh? They <laughs> like company, that's why we, the only reason we put these in there is because they're on their own without siblings. So they fare much better if they've got something in there. Although it's not warm and it's not another fox. Gives them something to hide underneath like they do their siblings. They tend to take treatment in their stride. It's almost as if they know we're helping them. Not all of them, but majority of them. The fox has, has always been demonised. I don't know why. It, it manages to live amongst us quite successfully without causing us any grief, really. Or occasionally it might make a mess in our garden. How is it treating a fox like that? How does it make you feel? Like I'm some use, I suppose. Um, being able to treat something that you know wouldn't otherwise have got any medical help when it's got a serious condition um, makes you feel like you're doing something useful in society, I guess. Pleases me anyway. A garden under surveillance. Just don't get a whiff. He's done that last night. You can smell it as you come down the stairs. God, I don't want to spend the rest of my life doing this. Have you got some um, footage to show you? We'll go and have a look at it in a minute, Please. Then, shall we? We wound the cameras back to show Janet the footage. Next door's cat, our ginger moggy. Mm. 
Is he going? It's the cat! So it's not a fox, it's the cat. Well... Well, it's got to be. But I didn't think a cat could give out big lumps like that. The two neighbours think it could have been a fox in the past, but for now, it's a cat on camera. While the urban fox makes a fine living out of dustbins, the rural fox is more red in tooth and claw. In the countryside, you've got a very cunning and wily animal in the fox. It's different to a town fox, and there's nothing realistically apart from a dispatching of a fox you can do to sort the problem out. We've lost one lamb, which has obviously been taken by a fox, and picked up a sort of dismembered lamb, which is half eaten by the fox. Um, so I've got no option but to get someone in, responsible person, to sort this problem out. Come nightfall, Lee has an appointment with the fox. Let's get, let's get a bit of clothing, because it's going to be cold, I reckon. Yeah. We'll go and see if we can uh, call this problem fox. Lee's not someone to glory in shooting foxes. For him, it's a job, one which he does as efficiently as possible. If you're shooting at something live, you want to kill it. You don't really want to wound it. You want to make something as humane as possible. So uh, that's what we do. Have the right kit for the job. It's a very essential piece of kit, the uh, night vision. We shot hundreds of foxes where you just will not shoot them on a lamp. You can't even drive into the farm without the fox. There's the other side of the field without any lights. And in the last 10 years, which I was really doing it serious, I probably shot 2,000. 2,300, something like that, in the last 10 years. Good shot, very good shot. I mean, Lee, Lee's exceptional with a rifle. That must have been looking straight straight at Lee, that must have been to shot sort of straight in the neck, sort of face on. I'm going to take this one back and see if we can um, spot a few more. I expect we're going to see a few tonight. Hopefully get the one that keeps killing our lambs. He's just texted us about half an hour ago to say that he's just checked the lambs before he's going to bed and he's seen one out there, so hopefully he's not scared it and we'll uh, get it for him. It can cost up to £200 per fox kill, but it's not easy money for the hunter. It can take many hours of stalking through the night. This is the most important fox of all. This is where we just seen a fox across here somewhere. This, this, literally, where, where the lambs and lambs have been attacked is literally sort of 250 metres down here. Right. And we've just seen a fox laid out in the corn down the bottom here. Which um, we can see if we can get a little bit close to it. Half an hour later, the target is sighted. Did you hear the strike? Yeah. Brilliant. Well, could that be the problem one? It's very close to where the, uh, where the lambs, lambs are. are. So, uh, I think what uh, divides everybody between liking foxes and hating them, obviously, is uh, obviously one thing, they look nice, nice and red, cute and cuddly. 
and that's what people do see but a lot of people don't see the actual destruction that they do sometimes you know it's only people that live in the countryside or you know well and you know people in london now are starting to have chickens and stuff like that so they then realize what actual damage they do because if they went into a chicken pen and just took one chicken it wouldn't be a problem or less of a problem there's a certain blood for blood justice in the night hunter the dead fox laid on top of the lamb it slaughtered part of the farmers like to stroke basically to touch or see makes them feel better knowing that knowing it's, it's dead dead basically There are 16 foxes for every square mile in London. The more the merrier for Nobby. So Nobby, what time of night is it at the moment? Do you know I don't know? <laughs> I don't know, I guess it's about half past three, but I'm not too sure. What's that then, a few bones? No, that's tin of, tin of, tin of dog food, a uh, packet of cat food, some cat biscuits, and some dog biscuits. For Nobby, the fox is a companion through the lonely nights. Yeah, I've always been a night owl. Always have, always have been. I'll be honest with you now, if I got up at nine o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock in the morning, I find the day's too long. Because there's, there's not much I can do to fill the day in. Who's going to win in the end, then, do you think? Oh, the people or the foxes? Oh, well, foxes will win. Hey, man, what can they do about them? They can't shoot them, they can't poison them. <sighs> they... You can't drive them off because more will come in. And they just have to live with them, I'm afraid. Sophia is moving out. She won't miss Nobby's companions and their attentions. At her new house, she's already setting up defences. Um, I just want to make sure that everything matches the security, like my old house. No, I don't miss foxes at all. I don't meet, miss the smell they leave in the garden, the poo. It's nice just to be able to like not worry so much about foxes being in the garden. You can't really stop foxes, they're everywhere, and it depends on the area. Um, there's only certain things that people can do to stop them, but you can't really go out there and shoot them all, so you should uh, put up with it on move house. <laughs> Omelettes for breakfast every day. Contented chickens, heads intact. It's one of Terry's volunteer days at the Fox Project. Today, he's releasing a fox they've nursed back to health. He's put on a lot of weight. And his coat's lovely. This is the best chance he's got, really. So you released the fox back in the same place where you found it? Yes. G give or take. Bearing in mind wherever you find it, it's an almost certainty that that is part of its territory. But the choice for us was either put him to sleep, which none of us really want to do with a healthy fox, or put him back and give him a chance to carry on with his life. Uh, Fox Project's probably released now, getting on to 10,000, maybe even more. So that's my task done for now, so let's hope he survives well. In all honesty, you get one that touches your heart, I suppose, and you, you like to follow it through. Good news for Tony. New chickens in the hen house and a new security system. All this work just to keep him out. God, that's beautiful. They're good friends, and they're not fox food either. Not this lot. Every night, the dance continues. You've gone where that other one went. 
Fox Huggers. Haters with the latest in deterrent technology. Take that. Vulpes Vulpes, the Red Fox, our ever bolder suburban neighbor. If you discovered an enormous sum of money, what would you do? Billy Bob Thornton and Bridget Fonda find temptation hard to resist next on BBC One, but a simple plan can go awry.